money makes these fictional worlds go round. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fictional currencies in movies and TV. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the made-up forms of money and other legal tender that fictional characters intend to use to purchase goods and services. We'll be ranking them based on their prominence in their respective stories, as well as their design, name, and importance to characters. This is a shroot buck. Number 10. Time in Time Now I'd say your money or your life, but since your money is your life, how dare you steal from me? This movie takes the phrase time is money literally. In a future world, people stop aging when they turn 25 and are then given one more year to live. But they can earn even more. How much time a person has left is stored on devices on their wrists. If I had all that time, I sure as hell wouldn't waste it. This central premise drives the plot of the film in a very inventive way, as an unexpected windfall of time drives the protagonist Will through a series of events that see him attempting to change the vast wealth and therefore age gap inherent in his society. We gotta wonder if daylight savings time is still a thing, though. Why would you doubt that? Number 9. Cubits, the Battlestar Galactica franchise. Colonial Cubits? Well, you got a little bit of everything, huh? Like the franchise they come from, these fictional coins have been reinvented since their initial appearance. In the original 70s series, they were, true to their name, golden rectangular coins, inspired by the initials of series creator Glenn A. Larson. The cubits seen in the reboot, however, have the characteristic cut corners that are found on other objects used by the 12 colonies, like paper. This jacket must be worth at least 15 cubits. Though the post-apocalyptic nature of most of the series and the survivors' move towards a barter system relegates cubits primarily to gambling situations, prequel series Caprica offers more varied scenarios for the currency to pop up. We're five years behind schedule and half a billion cubits over budget. Number 8. UD, also known as Universal Denomination, The Chronicles of Riddick. What in the bowels of Christ are you talking about, 700K? The protagonist of the Riddick films, Richard B. Riddick, is a murderer and a notorious criminal, whose list of offenses is longer than the number of ways he can kill you. With such an impressive resume, it's little wonder that Riddick has quite a bounty on his head. In the Riddick verse, that comes in the form of UD, or Universal Denomination, which comes in the form of bond notes. While their appearance in the film is blink and you'll miss it, prop photos reveal an elaborate semi-transparent design. I should have taken the money. Number 7. Space Bucks, Space Balls. You forgot late charges, which brings it up to uh, 1 million space bucks. Mel Brooks' brilliant spoof of Star Wars loves to slap the word space on the front of just about everything, and its fictional currency is no exception. Space bucks are more than just a part of the film's ambiance, however. They're also a motivating factor for the protagonist, Lone Star. Okay, we'll do it for a million. A million! The roguish hero and his sidekick Barf owe a debt to Pizza the Hut and are eager to make a big score of space bucks by retrieving a princess for a big reward. We'll be able to pay off Pizza the Hut! Gimme paw! <laughs> The currency's role in kickstarting the movie and its representation of the film's silliness made it a natural pick. 100,000 space bucks? By tomorrow? Number 6. The Trillion Dollar Bill, The Simpsons. Ooh, a trillion dollar bill. That's a spicy meatball. While we also considered the $300 Tricky Dick Fun Bill from Futurama, the trillion dollar bill plays a more significant role in this Simpsons episode. After an audit, Homer becomes the FBI's lackey, with the aim of going after a bigger fish, Mr. Burns himself. We're hoping that as his trusted employee, you can help lead us to it. But Mr. Burns gave me my job, and he hasn't fired me even after three meltdowns and one China syndrome. After World War II, Mr. Burns was given a trillion dollar bill to aid in Europe's reconstruction, but being the miser he is, he never delivered it. It commemorates my liberation of a trillion dollars that would have been foolishly squandered. Let's move! When Homer's dumb luck leads Burns to admit to having the bill, things don't look good for the gazillionaire. 
but Homer decides to aid Mr. Burns in an escape to Cuba. On a side note, don't trust Fidel Castro with your money. Now give it back. Give what back? <sighs> Number 5. Latinum, the Star Trek franchise. Money doesn't exist in the 24th century. No money? You mean you don't get paid? Although the Federation itself claims to have moved beyond money, plenty of other cultures in the Star Trek galaxy do use it. And none is featured quite as often as Latinum, the preferred tender of the capitalistic Ferengi. Take it off your hands for, say, seven bars of gold press Latinum. Introduced in Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Latinum, despite being divided into gold bricks, bars, and strips, is actually a liquid pressed inside the gold, making it a unique currency indeed. And with several Ferengi in DS9's main cast, the pursuit of Latinum acts as a recurring catalyst for many plots in the show. Beautiful, isn't it? Number 4. Clams, the Flintstones franchise. That'll be 355. 355? Shall I wrap them? This classic animated sitcom is famous for substituting animals for modern conveniences. And that extends to money, too. $50,000 gone. The Flintstones and the rest of the residents of Bedrock use real clams as their currency, in a clever take on the old slang term for money. That's not to say they don't use paper cash, too. In fact, this is far more prevalent in the original cartoon, where money is a frequent plot point. Here's your money. Cheapskate! Clams and alternatively sand dollars are seen more prominently in the live-action film adaptations, The Flintstones and The Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas. Number 3. Gold Dragon, Silver Stag, and Copper Penny Coins. Game of Thrones. Three coppers. How about a nice fat pigeon? Oh. Despite its fantasy setting, Game of Thrones deals a fair amount with economics. While there are several currencies in the world of Game of Thrones, including gold honors, our pick had to go to the resident coinage of Westeros. A hundred gold dragons on the mountain. I'll take that bet. The coins operate on the gold standard and are frequently mentioned in connection with the crown's debts, as a reward, or when comparing cheap things. Ten silver stacks seems a generous bounty. Make it a hundred. The coins' names are probably derived from the crests or emblems of the series' great houses, dragons for the Targaryens and stags for the Baratheons. Still, considering how rich they are, you'd think the Lannisters would have a lion coin. If I had a gold dragon, Every time I heard that joke, I'd be richer than you are. Well, you are richer than I am. Good point. Number 2. Galactic Credit Standard, also known as Republic Dataris, the Star Wars franchise. <laughs> Guess it's down to you and me. While the name credits is kind of the go-to word for fictional currency, Star Wars does manage to make up for this shortcoming with the money's importance to several plots. The pursuit of credits by characters is a plot point in several episodes of the various Star Wars animated series. But he's shooting up my place today. He's right. Drinks on the house. <laughs> However, their greatest importance to the franchise occurs in The Phantom Menace. When the party from Naboo is unable to use Republic credits on Tatooine, they bet on one Anakin Skywalker to prove victorious in a pod race so he can win his freedom and they can get the parts they need, effectively leading to many of the important events in the franchise. Credits will do fine. No, they won't! Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. How bad does someone want to find you? 40,000 units? Root! We're gonna be rich! Every bison dollar will be worth five British pounds. Room 818. Number 1. Galleons, Sickles, and Canutes, the Harry Potter franchise. How much for this? Five galleons. How much for me? Five galleons. I'm your brother. Ten galleons. When you think of fictional currency, these wizarding coins are some of the first to spring to mind. One sickle, you're up. Similar to Game of Thrones, galleons are gold, sickles are silver, and canutes are bronze. In the Harry Potter books, 
fake versions were used as a communication tool for the young, rebellious wizards of Dumbledore's army. While this detail is removed from the films, currency is still often featured. They're very valuable, aren't they? Ten galleons a leaf to the right by her. Harry's discovery that his parents left him rich serves as one of many indicators that he's left his old life behind. Didn't think your mom and dad would leave you with nothing though, did you? In addition, in the final movie, he and his friends find themselves nearly killed by some rapidly multiplying galleons and other treasures inside a vault. I said I'd get you in. I didn't say anything about getting you out. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.